вкусно. Get no closer. everyone thanks for being here tonight got a great show planned for you uh, tonight we're gonna be chatting with a man that his nickname is iron man and he actually got this video on his property he lives out there in north texas and if you're watching this on itunes or whatever your podcast player is there should be a video and if you actually tap the video and then turn it sideways uh, it'll actually play in full screen if you want to watch as we discuss the video. A little bit different way. I, I know on almost every Apple player it plays. Um, Android's a little bit different. On most of them it plays. If it doesn't, download CastBox. It's a free app. And you can actually watch a video and see my ugly face on, <laughs> on screen. Uh, but thanks so much for being here tonight. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show... Shoot me an email. My email address is Wes at SasquatchRonicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out SasquatchRonicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, this is going to be part of my Chronicles After Dark, and I'm just kind of testing things out, so bear with me. I'm pressing buttons, and I'm just kind of hoping, <laughs> hoping for the best. Uh, tonight, we'll be chatting with uh, Iron Man. And he captured the video. This is kind of a stabilized version of the video he captured out there in Texas. Uh, Iron Man, thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, brother. Appreciate you having us, and uh, God bless everyone. Yeah, I appreciate you being here very much. Um, tell me about this video. I know uh, that you live in North Texas, and you're on your farm. Um, if you would, kind of tell us about the video. Uh, what were you doing when you captured it? And then... Kind of talk about what you saw with the naked eye. All right, Wes. Uh, what was happening was it was uh, it was July the 24th, about four weeks ago, um, Saturday morning. Um, as always, I'm going out to my prayer room. I'm a pastor, so I'm always going out to my prayer room to prepare my message. And it was just a beautiful morning. Uh, sun was coming up, and I'm out there sipping coffee, um, playing with my new pup out there, just having a good time and just getting ready to go to the prayer room. And I looked toward the east, something caught my eye, and I could see it looked like a big head, and it was moving across a couple of pastures over, and it was moving real quick, and I said, this is strange. So I get to my pocket as quick as I can to, to turn on my phone, try to get it on video, and try to zoom in on this thing. And uh, I started watching it, trying to keep it in frame, and it's moving quickly. And I noticed that it has, it looks like a deer on its back. And I'm thinking, man, this is crazy. This thing's huge. It's moving fast. And I'm trying to keep it in frame, watching it. And, you know, it, it was hard to do, you know. And uh, uh, so it went down to the bottom of the property down there, and, and it looked like it got, got in some trees. And I couldn't see it with my eyes, but I kept a... Uh, phone going for a little bit longer and i'm glad it did because it came out and it it went behind the post and then it just disappeared and i think it just went back toward the east and probably went toward the lakes area up that area and i'm not sure exactly where it went but it, i couldn't see it no longer so that was basically it and it was just it was it was kind of terrifying but exciting and and all at the same time and just you know trying to stay focused and um just couldn't believe what i saw yeah, it's very cool. I'm sitting here watching it on the screen, and that thing's moving fast. In the very beginning of it, it almost kind of looks like the creature stops and actually looks at you. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it looked at me because the sun was coming up, and I could tell that it was a reddish color. But what happened as I studied it closer on my video, and I blew it up on my iPad, 
what it does, it comes to a, a fence line right there and it steps over that fence line like it's nothing. And, and I, I think it's about three seconds that it pauses. And, uh, and, and that's amazing because I measured a fence out where it crossed. It was 48 inches tall. And so I'm thinking that it, it probably just took its hand and pressed down the fence and stepped right over it and went like it was in, like it does it all the time, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Most people don't think about grabbing their phones. It's not the first uh, thing in our heads when we have an encounter. But this situation is a little bit different. I mean, you're on your farm. It's a dis- distance away from you. And you decide to... What, did you record it with your phone? It was just my phone. You know, I just you know, just thought I'd try to videotape what I could. I was going to take a picture, but I said, oh, a picture's not going to show nothing. So I hit the video. You know, hit the video button and try to zoom in best I could and try to keep it focused. And it really was hard, you know, because it was a it's about 125 to 130 yards away. And for that distance with the telephone, I think it's a pretty good video, man. I think it's a really good video. I think it's a really, really cool video uh, that you got. I'm so glad you decided, you know, really decided to share it. And as you and I were talking on the phone earlier uh, you were, I was asking you, was there anything else that was going on on the property? And it's my understanding nothing really has happened on this property prior to this. No, we've, me and my wife, we've been here 25 years. We built this house and we've been out here on this farm. Uh, I raised goats and chickens and, and nothing has ever happened. We've had a lot of livestock come up missing and we hadn't been sure what had happened. It could have been something took it, you know. Uh, chickens missing, goats missing, uh, but you know, you just you, automatically you think that someone has, you know, jumped the fence while you're at church or whatever, steal it. But now we're kind of like thinking maybe something, you know, came in and took it and left. Especially when you see, you know, a creature moving this fast. Uh, and plus, I, you know, when you looked at it, when I looked at it, it looked, it was a reddish color. I could see the that it had a reddish tone to it, and the deer I could tell was a gray color. And, and people said, my friend said, well, how can you tell what color it was from that distance? I said, well, if you look across the field and you see a cow, you know, 100 yards away, can you not tell what color it is? I said, in the same way, I could tell that it was a reddish color, you know, animal or a creature. So. Yeah, no, and I, I know growing up, your your dad shared an encounter that he had back in 1958. And I want to talk about that and kind of play his encounter here in a moment. Um, but tell me about Oklahoma. I know you were in Oklahoma and you got a picture of something in a tree. Um, and I'll show that here in a moment, but you also got, um, vocalizations. You recorded these, these strange vocalizations. Tell, tell me about that. Uh, the vocal, uh, that we got, uh, me and my wife, we were down in Octavia, Oklahoma, which is, I think it's probably about 50 miles north of Beaver Beaver Bend up in that area. So it's up in the mountains. And so we had uh, leased a, a cabin. So we went up there, and it was about sunset. We are out walking by a big lake out there. And uh, all of a sudden, we started hearing something screaming. And so, you know, I didn't have my phone, but I did grab my, my camera that I had. It was just a little Kodak camera, but, you know, I, I hit the film like I'm going to film. And I figured if there's something out there that I could, you know, record, it's going to pick it up pretty good. And it did. It, it picked it up pretty good. And so um, I recorded it as long as I could. And then I hit, hit it again when I started hearing it again. So several times I cut it on and off. So I was just trying to capture it. But it, it, sound, it sounded strange. It was, it was a holler. It was down in the bottoms. There's a river that runs through there. I could tell it's probably about a half a mile or a mile away. But it, it was loud. But I wasn't quite sure what it was, and I asked the people in, in the area, is there, any, is there elk in this area? Is there any moose in this area? And they said, no, just there's black bear, uh, there's mountain lions and, and uh, things like that, but n- no uh, elk. So anyway, that's what I got. Yeah, let's take a listen.
start it up again. It's strange. It's very strange. Kind of reminds me of my dog whining uh, in the background. I know a lot of times when you record audio, it doesn't quite translate from listening to what you heard. And I, I think you're right. I don't know that there is elk in Oklahoma. I, I'm not sure, but I kind of don't think that there is. Well, there was no, you know, the guys I talked to, I went to the sporting goods up there uh, in Beaver Bend and asked them, is there any elk in this area? And they specifically said, no. There's no elk, there's no moose, there's just, you know, black bear and, and uh, mountain lions and stuff like that. So, no, I, I don't know what it was. I just know that it wasn't uh, something that I've heard before. And, I, you know, I'm on a, a survival team, and I've been doing survival for 12 years, and I have never heard nothing like that. Now, you're hearing a, a probably a poor recording because it's on a little Kodak camera. But, you know, what I heard with my ears was so much louder and it was just it was crazy sounding. It didn't sound like a dog for sure. You know, um, and there's no there's no you know, there's some farms down the road from it. And, and I'm not saying it couldn't be a dog, but it didn't sound like a dog to me. Hollering. Yeah, I got you. That was just kind of my my first impression uh, when I heard it. And, you know, if you're recording it with a Kodak camera, I mean, it, it picked it up pretty well for his how far away it was. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is this picture you sent me of what, let's see if I can zoom in on it, of what appears to be, a, I mean, it's a blob squatch, but I mean, there's something there. Um, and I know you were talking about it being um, a small shot or a, a smaller Sasquatch is basically what you saw. Uh, tell me about this picture. Uh, it was, it was last uh, November. I was doing one of my survival trips, but this time I was out solo. So I was, I was really already kind of nervous because when you're out in a deep bush by yourself, you know, naturally, you, you know, you're going to be nervous. But it was about it was a Saturday, I think it was. And, and I was headed down to the river, uh, going to walk down the river, probably a mile or so, just, you know, where it curves and just take a look and see what's going on down there. And so I got down around the corner and I saw a big tree. Uh, I think it was an ash tree. It fell across the river. And there was a bunch of turtles on it. So I just want to get a picture of myself. You know, I take a lot of pictures. And when I did, I was, you know, taking a selfie. And after I got through, I looked up and, and where the river split, there's a, it goes back down west and it also goes south. There's a fork in the river. And I guess it was about uh, 150 yards down that river that there was something standing there looking at me. And, and I, I just froze. I mean, I was terrified because I knew it wasn't, it wasn't the man. And, and I didn't know exactly. I said, man, this has got to be Bigfoot. And I am like just freaking out. So I'm trying to ease as slow as I can into my pocket. And I got Velcro on my uniform. I'm trying to open it up without making a bunch of noise, trying to get my camera out so I can take a picture of this thing. And, and I think the moment that I took the picture, it, it must have turned because when you look at the picture, uh, the, the, the head is way out of focus. But but you can but you can see the chest on that thing and it's a female and you can see a big breast on it, and so I stepped to the north uh, to try to get a better picture and when I did I I took another picture and I didn't see the the, the big female but I I actually caught a baby in in the bush, and it was a small it was small compared way smaller than its mama it was probably about two and a half maybe three feet tall, uh, the head of it was about the size of a, uh, a I say uh, grapefruit, real small head, and it was it was looking toward the the south toward its mom, and so I guess she had shuffled back into the bush while the baby was waiting on her, and so 
I, I basically just went on down the river a little farther and I jumped up a, a white tailed deer and it, it, it scared the fire out of me. I, I thought, man, I'm, I'm fishing to go down. You know, I thought Sasquatch had me, but it was just a, a deer. You know how they snort and it scared me real bad. But and so I came back where I saw him. And I didn't see him anymore. So uh, the whole trip, I'm, I'm sitting, there, sitting there waiting and wondering, you know, where are they at? Well, that night, uh, I didn't tell you, but that night uh, at, at camp, I always make like a walking stick. So I had carved this walking stick that I've been working on for the past couple of days. And I had it leaning against a certain tree over by the uh, campfire. So when I went to bed in, in my hammock, uh, the next morning when I would woke up, that walking stick was laying right next right next to me beside my, my hammock. So it, it wasn't a coon. It wasn't a possum. It was whatever was out there it could have had me but it took that stick and laid it right next door to where i was sleeping that night and i heard something pop that night but never saw anything so that's a scary thought you know because it just tells me if these things wanted me they could have had me because i was all by myself out there yeah that is a scary thought it's a very scary thought tell me about the the female that you saw well she, at first she wasn't moving at all I mean, it was like she was just like frozen. And it was, I, I was thinking, well, maybe she's, you know, like me, just, you know, scared as well. But she was she was very large. I would say this thing, it, it was it was bigger than what I saw here on my farm. Uh, she was very wide, like almost as wide as a double wide ice box. But but she was a good eight foot tall. And I mean, I'm not exaggerating. This thing was big. And, and so, but, but, you know, she was gone, you know, that quick, you know, so they, they can move like, like a deer, you know, just that quick. And so, I mean, she was sort of a, uh, I would say like a, a sort of an orange, red color. Uh, she wasn't real dark, but the baby itself was a real, was a, was a, uh, brown color. So they were different colors. So that's unusual to me to think about that. Yeah, it is a little weird. I know uh, there's in through many different Sasquatches, though many different encounters, uh, they do come in different colors. But you would think the the child and the mother would be the same color. I get it. Um, I know that you grew up and your dad shared an encounter. You really knew about Bigfoot back when you were growing up because your dad had an encounter in 1958. Um, before I I play his encounter. Um, if you would, what do you remember from what your dad told you about his encounter in 1958? Well, what he had told me, uh, we heard this story our entire life, me and my brothers and sisters and my uncles and everybody wanted to hear the story, you know, because it was just a fantastic story. And, and everybody knew that my dad, he was a very honest truthful man and when he tell you something you could believe him like i tell people hey if my dad tells you that it's easter you can you can color some eggs because it's going to be easter because he's very truthful and so he would always tell us that you know he was out with his his brother-in-law and they were out working all day you know uh, hauling hay for this old farmer and so they came back to the farm and basically they uh had a couple beers you know with the old man before they left and so they're headed down a country road out in uh, Union Valley, Texas. And, and so I'll let you play the rest of the story. So let him tell it. He tells it better than I do. All right. Let's take a listen. My name is Wendell Brockway. I'm talking about a thing that happened to me in 1958. I was about one mile out of Union Valley, Texas. And me and my brother-in-law was down Joe Anderson's hauling hay. We had a big truck to unload, and we unloaded it, stacked it in the barn. And then it, we got ready to come home, and we got in the car. We was in an old car, an old Studebaker. We are driving down the road, and there's an old house on the left-hand side and no an crowd. And we w went by it, and as we was going by it, I looked over to the left, and I seen this big white thing standing up yelling. And it made my hair on the back of my neck stand up, 
and my brother-in-law was driving and he looked over at me and he said, Wendell, did you see that? And I said, yeah, I seen it. I said, what was it? He said, I don't know, Wendell, but it's something. I said, well, turn around, let's go back and look at it. So he went up about a half mile and there's an old road and he pulled in there and we turned around and went back. I didn't have nothing other than a cold drink bottle in the floor. So I picked it up. He said, what are you going to do with that? I said, well, man, that's a big thing. I don't know what it is. I said, I think it's a some kind of monster or something. And we pulled back by there, and that thing was still out there. And he's shaking his hands up and down. And he was white, had them long hairs on it on his arms and body and uh, I, my brother-in-law said do you see that and I said yeah I see it and uh, we went on back down the road and we turned around again and went back and when we went back it was gone and we pulled on past it and went on into town I told my wife about it and my sister but they didn't believe me. But I actually seen it. And James Fred Taylor was my brother-in-law. And if he was still alive, he could tell the same story. But that was back in 1958. I'm glad to be able to tell the story about it. That's all of it. Your dad seems so cool. I know he's not with us anymore, but that's super cool that you're able to record that. Um, I wanted to ask you, I know out there in North Texas, well, pretty much everywhere in Texas, the ground is like concrete out there and the audience is going <laughs> to, they're going to hang me from the town square if I don't ask. Um, after you recorded this video, did you ever go back and actually look for footprints? Well, you know, my, my, my grandpa, he was a, a, a great hunter and great tracker and a great, you know, he was great at setting traps and stuff. And he taught me a lot. And so I had a lot of people say, go down there and check. And I did and, and see the, I took a baggie with me to see if I could, you know, pick up some hair off the wire, but where it crossed it, the grass was pressed down. Uh, there was no hair, uh, it looked like the, the fence was a little bit oily, maybe from his skin residue or residue on his hand or whatever. But, uh, he crossed, I could tell where he crossed cause the gra grass was pressed down, but the ground, we hadn't had no rain in forever out here and it was hard as a brick. So there was no, there was no footprints. There was nothing that, that I could see. And I looked on both sides and it just, there was nothing, you know? So I, I wished I could have got footprints. Yeah, I know how hard the ground is out there, and it really is like concrete. You know, I'm sitting here watching this video. Man, that thing is really hauling. I mean, it's it's moving fast across your property. Right. It looks like he's headed home, you know, because it's, it's early in the morning, and he's trying to get back to somewhere, so you can tell that he's he's rushing, you know. And it's just it's so strange that he's carrying a deer, you know. And I've seen I've seen a few deer out this way, so I know there is some. My mother-in-law, she lives probably, I don't know, uh, six miles, seven miles from me. And I saw a deer going to her house, I, I guess, last uh, last December. So I know there's there, deer, there's some deer out here. Yeah, it's a really cool video, man. I can't commend you enough for, for capturing it. Um, gosh, it's so cool. Um, I would love to know if the creature actually returns to your property um, what do you think that these creatures are, Iron Man? There's obviously no wrong answer, but I'm curious on your opinion. Well, that's that's a hundred dollar question, there, man. There's, um, I really can't answer that. You know, I, I think it's some type of of gorilla, uh, ape, uh, but it has so many uh, human characteristics. For what I've seen, I mean, it, it just moved like a man. But it, it's so much bigger than a man. And, and, you know, biblically, there's nothing in the Bible that talks about a creature like this. So I don't there's I can't really pinpoint it what it is, you know. So I'm just going to have to trust God with that answer, you know. Yeah, I hear you. 
I hear you. It's so hard to know what they are. You know, I respect your answer. No one really knows what they are, uh, but it's so odd, and it's such a cool video that you got. Um, I know you're part of a band called Stained Red, and you got the nickname Iron Man, uh, which is kind of a cool nickname. Uh, but tell me a little bit about your band, Stained Red. Uh, Stained Red, uh, I started this group uh, back, back in 2018, almost three years now. Uh, we're a Christian rock band. We play a little bit on the metal edge. Uh, we've been on, been played on like uh, 14, 15 di different Christian radio stations. Uh, we, we share the word of God through our music. Uh, I write all the lyrics. I'm also a pastor. So I just, you know, we, we try to share the word of God through our music. We got a new single that just came out. It's called Bad Misconception. Uh, look it up on YouTube. And uh, you can also go to our website, which is uh, stainred.net. Uh, and check us out. And they, they call me Iron Man. I, I don't know if I told you, but I had uh, I had 12 spinal surgeries. I had uh, four in my neck and eight in my back. So uh, the, the nick, nickname kind of came. Guys were joking around with me and saying, you know, you you really are Iron Man. And, it, and we were all laughing. But next thing you know, everybody's calling me Iron Man. So it just kind of stuck. Yeah, well, I can, you know, you never, you can never choose your nickname. And, and I can think of a lot of other, you know, worse nicknames to be called be, beyond Iron Man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely, man. But Iron Man, I appreciate you coming on, man, and, and sharing the video. A lot of times people get this sort of uh, evidence. I don't know if you call it evidence, but it's, it's a cool capture that you got. Um, and then they never come forward or they never share it. And the fact that you did share it, man, I, I really appreciate it. And I really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you again for coming on. Well, man, let me just say this, that, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, trying to hoax everybody with fake videos. But but the truth is, man, I'm a, I'm a full-time pastor. I'm in a, a Christian rock band. and we're, we're always busy. And I got my family. And, and there's no way that I have time to, to sit out there and try to set up a hoax. I, what I did, I, I saw something, I videotaped it, and I tried to send it out there because I know there's a lot of people who, who love Bigfoot. And I figured, man, this would be what they want to see. So that's the reason I did it. I wasn't trying to, you know, trying to cause any conflict or just trying to show what I saw, you know. Yeah, I never thought that you did, you know, and I find the the video very compelling. And I don't think there's as many as, as hoaxed videos as people think there is out there. And I just I just can't thank you enough, man, for coming on and, and for sharing it. Thank you again. All right, brother. Uh, you have a good evening and uh, God bless everybody. Thanks so much, Iron Man.